Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from ExecuteAutomation.com and this is part 3 of our Appium with Java video series. And in this part, we're going to talk about locating elements in Appium. So I have split this part into two parts, part A and part B. So this is going to be part A of this video series. And before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 1 and part 2 since this part is going to be a continuation of that two parts. Okay, so Appium locators. As we all know that Appium has extended the Selenium web driver API, the locators in Appium is much like Selenium with some additional methods to identify the elements. And the most awesome part of Appium is the same method works for native, hybrid, and web applications. And most of them. It doesn't mean that everything works, but some of them works for some kind of application type and some methods work for some different types of application types. So uh, most of the methods, if you start to work with Appium, they look very similar to the Selenium WebDriver API, uh, WebDriver methods, and that's the most awesome part. And I feel personally that it's very easy for any guy who starts to learn Appium from a Selenium background guy. Okay, so different Appium locators in native applications. So Appium locates element with different properties like uh, accessibility IDs, uh, tag names, uh, class names, and XPath as well as the ID. So the accessibility ID was formerly a name property uh, which does the same job. Right now it is accessibility ID. Similarly, the tag name is replaced to class name. And also the class name should be specified as a fully qualified names like android.widget.buttons, something like that, right? And similarly, it also supports XPath and ID. So these are the different locators available for the native application testing using Appium. So if you see the screenshot below, uh, the find element itself has got a different kind of overloaded methods like find element by accessibility IDs, by class names, CSS selectors, ID, link test, name, partial link test and tag name. So either you can use this way or you can use the find element method and pass the by class to perform the same operation, which does the same uh, job for you. But they have some more overloaded methods which does the same operation uh, instead of using the find element method, right? So as that said, uh, let's start to see them in action to locate an element with ID and also some other properties. In the next video, we'll discuss some more way to locate the properties of the application's UI controls. All right, so let me flip to my Eclipse. So this is the project which we worked in part one and part two, and we just tried to set the desired capabilities in part two of this video series, and we just tried to see if the application is really loading or not. Great, so what we're gonna to discuss today is we're gonna locate the elements of our application. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the emulator. So I have already opened the emulator for Android. So it's just open here. And you can see that the application which we're going to test is this calculator application. And just for now to see how this application uh, is able to identify things. So for this uh, demonstration purpose, I will take this calculator application. Maybe in the next video, we'll take some other application for demonstration. Right, so uh, we don't know what is this ID uh, for this particular text box, for this text box, for this particular option button, we don't know anything. So for locating these elements, uh, remember in part eight of our understanding Appium video series, we discussed about Appium locator window as well as Android's UI automator window. So uh, we can use any one of them to locate the elements and find the controls. Actually, personally, I'm very comfortable with uh, the UI automator. So that was very, very easy. It's more like the object spy of QTP or uh, Core UI test builders crosshair. So I'm very uh, used to that one. So probably I will switch to UI automator, which ships with Android SDK. So for that, I'm going to the SDK. All right. So this is the uh, platform tools and sorry, this is the tools which I should look for. Here is the UI automator available. So I'm going to the command prompt, go to the CD 
and paste it right here system this is an f colon all right so ui automator dot bat awesome so this should probably bring us the ui automator window right now so this is the ui automator viewer and if you hit this uh, refresh uh, this will keep on uh, poking your android emulator to get the information of this particular calculator all right in the meantime let me open the apm as well so some people call this as apm some people call this as appium all right seems like the ui automator has grabbed the screen details of our application and you can see that if i take this uh, mouse or this controls uh, it just picks things up right it just brings all those things and it also shows what is the property for this particular uh, control and you can see that there is something called resource ID and that's uh, something which I'm looking for right now it has an ID of EDT number one and uh, if you go here it's uh, it has an ID called EDT number two similarly it has a class it has a package and it has an index that's it so this is what we're really uh, looking for maybe I can use uh, this particular text edt number one maybe just to see if this uh, text is being typed in this particular control just to prove that we could able to uh, do that operation so i'm going to take this all right and then let me start the apm server all right so the apm server should start in a few minutes okay it just started and now we are good to go so what i'm going to do is uh, i will write a code for the uh, client API so for doing that we have already said all those things so it's up and running right now so all I have to do is just write a driver dot find element remember in uh, selenium we used to find a control using the find element method so there is a method here as well as you can see there's a find element and within this there is a by class so by dot if you put that you can see that it brings up the id and you can see that it's actually coming from open qa dot selenium dot by so everything is actually selenium and that's the beauty of this apm so i'm going to bring this id and the string i'm going to pass is the edt uh, number one right and then i can use the send keys method to type some value inside here maybe the 20 is the value which i'm going to type and see if it really works right so that's it uh just just a very very simple operation just to prove that uh we could able to identify using this particular method right so for running this again uh, since this is a test ng you should go to run as and select the test ng test to uh, execute the test and now you can see that it will start to uh, run behind the scenes all right seems like appium is running and uh, maybe let me click this home button or back button Ah, uh, the emulator is very, very slow. All right, I think it's going to load the application right now. All right, it opened the application. And now it should type the value 20 into our edit number one. All right. Uh, yes it should come on come on come on awesome it just type 20 so the zero is the default value so just bring it up that value so just type the value as well so as you can see the operation is pretty slow because of the android emulator is very very slow so we will actually talk about uh, dealing with this kind of slow emulator soon uh, in upcoming videos of this video series we'll use some other way of uh, emulator to perform the operation right just for now just bear with me that uh, this is how you can perform the operation using your android emulator and uh, as you can see that we could able to perform the send keys operation using the by id and uh, what if i use some other method maybe i uh, just copy this and instead of the find element method you can perform the same operation using the find element 
by id and uh, you can just type the same thing and it, it just uh, do the same job what it uh, did in the find element method uh, well we can also use the id instead of uh, this just the edt number one uh, we can copy the full uh, uh, path also uh, so if you go to the ui automator you can see that the resource id has got this much uh, this length of uh, definition for this particular uh, control so you can copy this and you can also paste it right here uh, like this and then if you try to run this it will also execute uh, as expected so if i just run this uh, test ng test uh, you can see that uh, the test will uh, just start so this will start and you can see that the test will start to execute uh, as expected so this is another way of performing the operation using the uh, uh, id not just passing the uh, edt number one but the full path right so these are the uh, different way of performing the operation uh, using id of uh, identifying the control in apm all right awesome so uh, that's it guys so this is how you can perform the operations uh, for finding a control uh, using id so in the next video of this video series we will discuss more about accessibility ids class names indexes etc so thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day